Hello friends, welcome to Oracle new feature video series. In this video, we are going to learn about what is lateral keyword and what is this lateral inline view all about. So let us start with an example so that it is easy for us to understand the practical usage of the lateral keyword. So now what I'm going to do, I'm having like two table. One is like an employee table and the standard department table. So we are going to write a query to find the department wise average salary. So this is our expected output. We need to print department number, department name and average salary. Obviously the department name will come from department table and the department number is going to be the joining condition for both employee table as well as department table. And the salary we are going to compute from here. That is the average salary we are going to compute from the employee table. Fine. Now let us start with our first method of implementation. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you one method of implementation that is the normal way by which we used to write the query. Then I will show you how to implement the same thing using the lateral keyword. Then we will uh, understand the difference between the normal implementation and the usage of the lateral keyword. By this way, we will understand what scenarios we have to use the lateral keyword. Fine. So let us start with the method one of implementation. So let's start with employee table. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to select department number and I'm just going to use the average function, average of cell. Since we are using the group function, let us put group by department number. So now we just got the department wise average cell. Let us just restrict to two decimal place. So let me just put round. So either you can use round or shrunk. So we just got the department wise average salary. Let me just give alias like average salary we want to display the department name also so what we can do let us select from department table so now this entire query let us make it as a inline view here so let me give alias as d where d dot department number equal to department dot department number so that we will get all the information from the department table and the average salary that will come from the inline view. So the key learning here is that the inline view will compute the average salary and the department number information and the department table will give us the department number and the department name information and then we are just joining that is we are using the inner join here. We can select only the column whatever is needed to display so let me just select only this information so department number we can give department dot department number otherwise we will get error like uh, column ambiguously defined fine so we just got the department number department name and the average salary so this is our first method of implementation so the key thing here is that first we are computing the average salary that is department wise average salary in the inner query and in the outer uh, table we are selecting the department name that we are joining using the inner join the key thing here is that the inner query cannot access any column from the outer table that means we will not be able to access the column of department table within the inner query or the inline view okay let it be like this let us see one more method of implementation so this is our first method let us see one more method of implementation so let us write one more method of implementation select star from department table so let me select whatever the columns we need we just need only the department uh, number and department name so now what i'm going to do i'm going to write the inline query in the select class in the first method we wrote the inline query in the from class in the second method i'm just going to write the inline query in the select class so here what i'm going to do from employee where employee dot department number equal to department dot department number so let me just execute it let me give the alias like average salary okay so this is our second method of implementation in the second method if you see we are selecting all the information from the department table and in the select class for each department we are computing the average salary so by that way these informations comes from the department table and this information we are computing in the select class whereas in our first method the average part we are computed in an inline view and that inline view we have used as part of the from class okay. 
So this is our second method of implementation. So the first method we used the inline view, which is as part of from class. In the second method, we are using an inline view or a subquery, which is as part of the select class. Fine. Now let us see one more method of implementation. So the key thing here is that in the method one, in the inline view, we will not be able to access the column of the outer table. For example, in this case, we will not be able to access the column of the outer table, department tables column name. That's what we are going to do in the method three. So let us take the first method query. Okay, now what I'm going to do, let me just remove this in var condition. See now, suppose if I, if I say, uh, where employee dot department number equal to department dot department number. Now, if I try to use like this, you can see here, I'm, I'm trying to use the uh, department tables column within the inline query. When we try to execute this query, we will get an error saying that uh, department dot department number is in invalid identifier. That is because by default, we will not be able to access the column within an inline view. That is the column of an outer table within the inline view. However, when you say a keyword called lateral, let me put a keyword called lateral. Now, when you say the keyword as lateral, we will be able to access the column of the table that is present in the left side of this inline view. So that is the lateral inline view. By specifying the lateral keyword, we are saying that this inline view is a lateral inline view and within the inline view, we will be able to access the column of a table that is present in the left side of that inline view. So here is the query. So the key learning here is that by specifying the lateral keyword, we will be able to access the column that is present in the left side of this lateral inline view. Okay, so this method three also will execute very similar to the method two. That is for every record in the department table, the inline view, that is the lateral inline view will get executed and the result will be returned. For example, for department 10, the average salary will be computed and returned. Then for the next department 20, the inline view will get executed and it will return the average salary of 20. And for the department 30, the inline view will get executed and it returns the average salary of department 30. This is somewhat similar to the correlated subquery concept, what we normally use as part of the select class. Okay, so this is about the method three. So I just want to show you all the three different methods. So if you see here in our first method, we are using as inline view as part of from class. In our second method, we are using the inline view as part of the select class. In the third method, we are using the inline view as part of from class only, but within the inline view, we are using the column of the table, which is present in the left side of the view. That is possible by specifying the lateral keyword. Okay, I just want to show you the documentation from Oracle. So here is the documentation from Oracle. So specify the lateral keyword to designate the subquery as a lateral inline view. By specifying this lateral keyword, what we achieve is that we will be able to access the column of the left side table within our subquery. That is the advantage. Now let me show you one practical scenario where this lateral keyword will be used. See the main advantage is whenever you want the subquery to be dynamically generated or the rows of the subquery to be generated at the runtime based on the row of the previous table or the previous result set. Then in that case, we can use the lateral, lateral uh, keyword. Let me show you one practical example where this will be very helpful. Suppose we have a table, something like this, which contains like comma separated strings. So in one row, we have a value like a comma b. In another row, we have value like k comma l comma m comma n. And if the expectation is, I want to print it something like this, a, b, k, l, m, n. So how can we achieve this? Normally, how can we achieve this is a and b, that is the a, b row, we want to replicate two times. k, l, n, m, that is the second row, we want to replicate four times. So this, we want to replicate twice. This we want to replicate four times so that from first row, we can print A. 
from second row we can print b similarly from first row we can print k from second row we can print l from third row we can print m and from fourth row we can print n so now let us see how can we write a query to achieve this functionality then i will show you how to write a query using the lateral keyword then we'll see which one is much simpler so let's start with the table i have a table called t which contains the information like comma separated information the first row is like a comma b and the second row is k comma k l m n so let us write our first method of implementation so first what i'm going to do i just want to replicate the records that is the first row into two times second row into four times for that what i'm going to do let it be here now what i'm going to do let me select c i'm going to count the number of comma okay so for that i'm using regular expression count so i am going to count the comma here and i'm just i just want to put one because when there is one single comma then we need to replicate two times if there is two comma then we need to replicate three times so i'm just putting plus one here now i'm just going to find the maximum uh, occurrence of comma you know whatever the row so in this case it is like four row okay now what i'm going to do select star from dual connect by level less than or equal to let me just make this the entire part as an inline view here so this just returns like one two three four let me make it as level so now what i'm going to do i'm just going to use this query as part of from class okay so that the entire record will get replicated four times let's say order by c comma level or l let me just give alias as l here so that i can use it in the order by class so now all the records got replicated four times but i want the a b to be replicated two times k l n m to replicate four times so that i can restrict by using the var condition so var l less than or equal to same thing based on the comma we will restrict it fine now if you see uh, the a and b got replicated twice k l n m got replicated four times so let me select c this is l now we just need to extract the characters for that we can use regular expression substring let me use c w comma one comma l so Yeah, now we extracted a b in the first two rows k l n m so anyway we can remove these two column because this is we are not interested in printing the actual value so we just converted a comma separated values into a uh, row of strings now let us try to implement the same functionality using lateral join so what i'm going to do select star from t so basically i'm selecting c i need to replicate it now so i'm just writing select level l from dual connect by level less than or equal to regular expression count of c comma so basically i'm counting how many number of commas is here plus one so here i'm just putting lateral the reason i'm putting lateral is i'm i'm accessing the column c which is part of the table t now let me just execute it now if you see the first record will get executed two times because this regular expression count of c will return two for a and b i mean regular expression count plus one will return two for a and b and the same thing will return four for k l n m that's why the first row got replicated twice and the second row that is k l m n got replicated four times so now let us select the level also outside so we just got it now we'll just use the same regular expression here Now you see the difference between the first query and the second query. So here is the query. So this is our first method of implementation and this is our second method using the lateral keyword. Now you see that by using lateral keyword, the query becomes much simpler. And one more thing in our first implementation, I'm trying to access the table two times. But in our second method that is using lateral, we are accessing only one time. So the key learning here is that whenever your subquery is dependent or you want to generate the rows dynamically based on your left side table or based on your left side result set then you can use the lateral join 
If you have learned something new, please like this video, subscribe and stay tuned for new feature video, interview question, SQL practical question and concept videos. If you want any questions to be answered, you can post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail ID. And thanks a lot for watching this video.